Ash, thank you so much for joining us. So I'm super geeked because we are here today with one of my favorite people on earth, Dr. Nicole Howard. Thank you so much, Nicole, for joining us today. So glad to have you here on Edge Match. Thanks for having me. So let me tell you all about Nicole, if you don't already know her. So Nicole Howard, PhD, is currently an assistant professor and program coordinator in the School of Education in the Department of Teaching and Learning at the University of Redlands. Nicole has served as an educator in various capacities over the last 18 years. She's taught at the high school level, 9th through 12th grades, and special education in the Compton Unified School District in grades K through 4 in the Corona Norco Unified District and the Santa Ana Unified School District. And she was a program specialist for personalized and blended learning in the Learning Innovation with Technology Department at SAUSD. Dr. Howard has also taught in the College of Educational Studies at Chapman University. Nicole is currently the outgoing chair for ISTE's Digital Equity Network. Her research and practice interests are related to effective technology use in education and equity issues in computer science, STEM education, and professional learning for educators. So that is awesome. That is very, very impressive. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So tell us um, a little more. What's your background and who or what inspired you to go into education? Mm, so my background, um, actually, before coming into education, I was a program or I'm sorry, um, a project manager, a creative manager for Paramount Pictures. And I used to design uh, DVD covers for international territories. And I worked on projects like Mission Impossible and, um, you know, uh, Twin Peaks is another project I worked on. And we worked on creating uh, like bus shelters. And I remember, you know, in Blockbuster, I'm, I'm eight giving my age away here, but you know, when Blockbuster was out there, I helped to work on, you know, DVD covers for international territories that would display DVDs in their stores. So um, my background is very creative. I danced for many years um, growing up. I really enjoyed dancing and I actually started teaching dance. And that's one of the things that inspired me to come into education. So I, I took my creative energy and I took my interest in actually teaching and working with youth in underserved communities. And I let that um, in, uh, push me forward into pursuing my own um, education to become a teacher. Tell us about some of your passions in education and what, what drives them. Well, I, I'd say what still drives me are the thinking about the faces of those young girls who I worked with when I taught dance and uh, still knowing their stories and seeing where some of them are today. I'm proud of them. Um, that really inspires me uh, to keep going and, and it, it drives my passion, which is uh, making sure that students have what they need. And in that process or along that line is uh, making sure that teachers have what they need to support students in their future success. Um, you know, as you could tell from the introduction, I'm really curious about how we can make sure that there's an equitable use of technology. And I just remember my own time in the classroom, in a K-12 classroom, and really, you know, trying to find the funding for new technology and um, then moving from one district to another and then thinking, going from the classroom to district level and still seeing where you know, support for teachers and students continues. And even as a university professor, I'm not disconnected at all from the K-12 classroom. I see why and where it's important that I continue to do the work in those classrooms. And so um, I'm really passionate about, at this stage, really making sure I support our teachers and pre-service teachers in their work in their classrooms and trying to figure out how to close some of those gaps. And I know there are a lot of gaps right now. So I'm really passionate about um, supporting teachers who will then support our students. I feel you, I love that. So supporting the teachers that will support the students. So that is awesome. So, all right, so tell us a little bit about what does the term digital equity mean to you and what is your work around digital equity? Yeah, this is a this is a good question because I feel like even the term digital equity itself, we're starting to add layers to that and it's shifting, right? And so to me, it does mean um, students having access to digital tools, um, you know, access to uh, internet. Um, and actually I'm thinking even deeper than just access to the internet. I feel like they also are in need of an understanding of the internet culture. And so digital equity to me means making sure that um, the students have what they need when it comes to the use of those tools, but also that our educators are prepared 
to support students in navigating those tools. So that's where I feel like digital equity also includes digital citizenship, right? I think we're seeing this term um, widen a bit. And I'm thinking about my uh, one of my colleagues who is also my husband, who you know, uh, Keith Howard. Um, he and I have talked about how um, we now are in this like stage of gap gazing a bit where we're always looking at all of the gaps, right? The achievement gap, the opportunity gap, the digital divide gap, the participation gap. And um, so when I think about the work that I want to do and that I am doing now, it's figuring out how to narrow those gaps, right? How to have these conversations, not just isolated in teacher prep programs, but across um, teacher preparation and K-12. And then how are we supporting our districts and finding the resources? How are we supporting each other with the professional learning that needs to happen um, for our pre-service candidates, but also for our teachers um, who are in the classroom right now. So uh, my work is really around supporting, like I mentioned before, like that's my passion, right? So um, my work is really around figuring out how to use the research, the evidence-based practices, um, doing all of that stuff still, but using it to really actually physically go in and offer this. That is phenomenal. And we're going to dive into that in a little bit. We're going to talk a little bit more about <laughs> some exciting things coming up. Um, but OK, so you you mentioned a lot about uh, preparing teachers uh, to help them support students. So what are some ways that higher ed and K-12 can work best together? Yeah, that's a really good question, because I do think that we in narrowing those gaps, and bridging those gaps that we need to actually come together and have honest conversations and discuss what the needs are. Um, and those conversations can happen through formal meetings or we can even have those conversation conversations in informal settings like professional learning opportunities that are created on university campuses that invite teachers from the district to come onto the campus and they're free. And I remember, you know, we, we did one just this past, um, semester. So I think it was like spring semester right before the summer. And we had sessions where we had some K-12 teachers, some pre-service candidates. We had administrators. We had university faculty all in the room talking about the ways in which they can use these technology tools and how they can um, find the funding and how they can work around uh, limitations that they may have on campuses. I think it, it's, so the way we can really work together is by continuing to come together and then have those conversations um, just beyond the email exchange, right? And I think it starts locally first, making sure you're connecting locally. And then I think it can happen globally as well. I have, I get some great ideas from people that aren't even here. I mean, I get great ideas from you and we're in, you know, two different places. I'm West Coast, you're East Coast. And so I think having um, conversations across the globe are helpful as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, just, I mean, it's it's crazy like how technology allows us to just connect and, you know, just, just share ideas. And I mean, just have these conversations constantly, you know? Um, so absolutely. All right. So could you tell us about your work with uh, computer science and STEM? Sure, sure. Um, so my work with that started, uh, my interest started when I was a third grade uh, teacher and I brought in um, BYOD. You know, I had my third graders bringing their own devices to school and a lot of the devices were like cell phones that their parents um, had turned off service or changed um, carriers and the students brought them in and we connected them to Wi-Fi and we started um, doing like, uh, you know, coding, basic coding that they could do on a smartphone. Um, and my idea there was at first to expose them to coding and computer science. And then I started thinking of ways in which we could integrate the computer science into math, into language arts. Um, and it's, it was really exciting for me as a classroom teacher to do that and actually be hands-on and working with students. And I sought out some grants and, you know, brought in Lego, uh, Mindstorm, you know, all of those great things, Ozobots, um, Makey Makeys. Um, so I'm thinking about the STEM and the computer science sort of, you know, and the computational thinking, right? Bringing all that together. Um, so I, I, my work was there first, and then I moved to district level, and I was um, had the privilege of starting a teacher's coding club for our district. And 
Yeah, you probably remember that. And I mean, we had teachers come out and it was monthly. They would come to the district and just innovate, create, explore in the way in which the ways in which we would want our students to do explorations. And they began to take the conversation from how do I do that to how do I Im embed this into my instruction so my students can do it? And I mean, there were very rich conversations. So my work is again, you know, here even linked to supporting teachers with their integration of computer science and, and STEM. Um, I also uh, designed uh, one of our courses on our university campus for our pre-service teachers around STEM methods. So I brought in the computer science there as well. And I'm trying to support with the, the idea of integration as opposed to it being a standalone, right? Yeah, so um, that's a little bit of my work right now. I do have some research um, projects that I'm working on around that as well, but um, that's my hands-on uh, hands work on computer science and STEM. I love that. And I love I love the teacher coding club. Like when you told me that, I was just like, oh, that is amazing. So yeah, fantastic. Some of the best ways to learn things are, you know, definitely getting your hands on it. So that that is excellent. Yeah. Right. Yeah, definitely. So all right. So here's kind of like one of those like top three brr things. So, <laughs> <laughs> so what are the top three things that you would change in education to make it better for all students? I would change the gaps. I know that's broad. I would, I mean, but I would, I would close those gaps, right? Okay. Um, it's a tough one, but that's what I would do. Um, what I would change, I would change the the hallway conversations and the lounge conversations, like when you're just passing each other. And I would, I would create opportunities for deep dialogue for teachers. I would, uh, what else would I change? I would find a way to make those. Um, department level meetings or grade level meetings, um, integrated meetings where university faculty would come on the campus and meet with and learn about what our teachers are doing um, at the K-12 level. So I would definitely change um, that piece, that communication piece. I would bridge, I would close that, that gap and hopefully work on that communication piece. And um, yeah, I think that, I think I named three. Eliminate yeah. conversations and then change the hallway meeting structure. Oh, I love it. Love it. Love it. And I love like how you're bringing all of, you know, everyone to the table so that we can all learn from each other. That is really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just wanted to give a shout out to Regina who's tuning in. Hey, Regina. Hi, Regina. <laughs> yes. So what is on the horizon for you in the near future? Well, speaking of Regina, um, and Sarah, we have um, a coming out soon in a series. The series is called uh, Closing the Gap, and we do focus on digital equity strategies. Uh, one of the books focuses on those strategies in teacher preparation program and the other on um, those strategies in K-12 classrooms where we talk about supporting teachers and coaches and leaders. And we, we do define leaders um, as not just uh, teachers and coaches, right? We have our principals who are leaders obviously as well. So I have those um, books in the works. Um, I'm also continuing my digital equity work, which means I'm being a listener as well, as well as a talker in those conversations. And I'm trying to kind of push the conversation a little bit further um, beyond just us on the campus, but also how do we close the parent gap, right? How do, we bring, how do we bring the parents in and involve them more into those conversations about equity um, and inclusion? Um, and then I'm also uh, doing some computer science integration work, looking at how we can integrate computer science a little bit more um, fluidly through uh, elementary. So, yep, those are my projects for right now. Very nice. So you have your hands full and this is this is amazing work that you're doing. So thank you so much for for all that you do for the profession and for for kids everywhere. <laughs> thank you, Sarah. Uh, thank you. So really wanted to um, give you a shout out one more time. So uh, thank you so much for your time today. And everyone, you can find Nicole on Twitter at Nicole R. Howard and on her website, NicoleHoward.com.